I'm here to talk about an initiative within the Kinzen Center for Cybersecurity to take an open source uh, first approach. So I'm Jean-Pierre Vigneault. I'm a technical manager in the Enetscall Platform and Automation uh, Directorate within the Kinzen Center for Cybersecurity, uh, which is part of Government of Canada. I've, I have 12 years of experience doing development on security product, um, building red teaming tools, uh, EDR products, and uh, malware analysis. And then uh, five years leading teams and management. So let, let me tell you a little bit about what is uh, the, the CCS, as we call it. So uh, the Kizen Center for Cybersecurity is a source of uh, expert advice, guidance, services to support cybersecurity for government, critical infrastructure, private sector, and Canadian publics. So as you can see, this is a pretty uh, wide range of uh, areas uh, that's difficult to cover in just one way. So, so as you know, attackers are working in the teams. So cybersecurity is effectively a team sport and open source can help us uh, play in the team. So how do we play together and defend as a community? I think we need to move from a proprietary ecosystems towards a more open and shared ecosystems. So your systems needs to be customizable to your environment and you need to be able to contribute improvement back to the community and benefit from the improvement that they are making themselves. Your systems needs to speak common languages for quick integration and also for being able to share recipe uh, with, with your partners and other people. You need to be able to combine the power of commercial, but also infosec communities and open source product. So the idea is that you, you don't want to be um, stuck in a single ecosystem. You want to be able to cherry pick uh, what really works for you and pick the best uh, pieces uh, to, to be able to accomplish what you need. So in this CCS, we took a uh, open source first approach. So what I mean is that every time that we are considering a, a new product or we're looking for a starting development of something, the first thing we will do is we will look into um, open source project, look for alternative, look for uh, possibilities of uh, adapting certain products that are available. And, and then we will, once we adopt something, we will contribute back uh, as much as possible to, to those products and participate within the community uh, of those projects. We will also take a step further, which is to actually contribute back our own open source software. So when we don't find an alternative um, that, is, that is viable for us, we will continue to build systems, but uh, we're, we're trying to make those systems available back to the community um, so that it can help others. And finally, we will complement our, our solutions with um, commercial products and, and have really a complete ecosystem uh, for, for our mission. So the, the, we've been gone, going through a transition uh, internally and uh, we have been, uh, mo we are moving to, from a completely custom uh, developed environment to a, a completely community driven environment uh, or almost uh, completely uh, uh, community driven. So what that means for us is, um, as I mentioned, we are in a business of uh, defending and providing services and, and those are um, at, at a massive scale. So we are protecting Government of Canada networks. Um, so that can, that can be upwards of a million endpoints uh, from like host to network to cloud. Um, so there is a lot of data. Um, but industry and open source communities have made a lot of progress in big data platforms. So we embrace um, this project and we built our platform from uh, mostly open source uh, backbone. So what that means for us is that the, our data formats are, are using Parquet files. Our query engine and our um, and are using Spark and Trino. Our data lineage and discovery is using data. Um, our scheduling of analytics and detections are using Airflow, NB Gallery. We're using Jupyter Hub as well for de developing uh, new analytics. 
Um, a project I'll talk about a little bit later, assembly line, which is our own system. And we're using um, other, other uh, like many other um, signaturing formats, such as Yara, Sigma, and Circata, which are all open source. Um, in terms of investigation and triage, we use a tool called Superset, um, which is a BI tool uh, that we adapted to our needs. And uh, another project I'll talk about a little bit is Otter, which is our own alerting platform. Our sharing is done in a common um, schema, which is open source, uh, MISP, Sticks and Taxi, and CCS Yara uh, standard for exchanging Yara signatures. And finally, all of this is running on open source technologies, uh, such as Kubernetes. We use Bitwarden for password manager. We use AshCorp Vault for secret management and Grafana for um, metrics and, and logs. And the reality is that we use those 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 tools, those projects, but we actually contribute to many of them, improving the, the these projects for the entire community with our own expertise. So let me talk a little bit about um, CCS zone open source projects. So the first one is assembly line. So assembly line is a scalable file analysis and triage platform. It, it's it built to detect malware um, with, with file like by scanning files, and it can scale to millions of files every day. It is extensible to fit your your own unique environment and customizable because it's open source. And it was a release uh, in 2017. So Serenity Line is there to um, use our analysts and developer and the OfoSec community and bring them together to work year round around building new detection capabilities um, that are, are unique and allows us to detect threats that we would not find otherwise. So to, to at, at eye level, what SM Line does is it allows for submitting files via APIs or via a, a, an ICY. And files can be coming from anywhere uh, in your environment. So that can be from email attachment, can be from your web gateways, can be from your EDR products. It can also be to support your instant response team, your um, your analyst, and your forensic teams. So SMLine will, will intake all of those files in the system. And then it will analyze it uh, depending on each different file types. It will analyze the file with different services, different plugins. And we have up to like 50 different open source um, services within the systems. A lot of them are built on uh, libraries that are built in the community. Um, it will generate alerts, a report. Uh, it will extract your sticks, tags, and it will re scan recursively your files to go very deep uh, deeper than any other products that I know um, in order to um, try to find uh, if there's something malicious about a file. The nice thing about it too is it will integrate with other products, either other um, systems that you have or other commercial product. So it will integrate with antivirus, uh, sandboxes, and other security products easily. Um, the end goal with SM line is to generate alerts that our own analysts will triage. Uh, it also to create uh, to enable automation so that you can build analytics around files coming in your network and extract in schedules of compromise that you can use to go hunt or to go take action uh, mitigation actions. So what we found, because the size is kind of not working as intended, but the what we found is that uh, we've launched uh, this year a, um, a Discord channel, and the, the amount of growth that we've seen in this channel has been quite amazing. Um, we've also op like moved our, our scheduling systems towards the open one so that people are able to do feature requests and see what we're working on. And we started to write a series of blog posts. Um, but we're, we're also very actively contributing uh, back to many projects. And our team is being recognized. Um, and, and I think the, the work we're doing there is, is really appreciated by the community. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about Aller. Aller is not currently open source. Uh, it is a, um, a next generation alerting management and triage platform. It will be open source later this month. Uh, so the code will be showing up on our GitHub page in the, under the Cyber Center space. Um, so what Otter does is um, maybe a little bit similar to what Sunline was doing, but instead it will take alerts. It will um, you, you can 
create analytics. Uh, SMLine itself will can generate alerts. But the idea is that we will centralize all the alerts under one system and allow for uh, correlation, allow for centralized management, uh, and enable um, investigation, um, and allow your analysts to work on uh, events, basically. So if there's compromise uh, within your environment, it allows uh, your own analyst to work together uh, collaboratively. It also enables automation so that um, a portion of the investigation can be automated and already available um, to the analysts when they are looking at a specific event. So how does uh, open source enable us to deliver on our mission? The, the idea there is that, as you saw at the beginning, we have a very broad mandate. So we have to uh, play at, at a different level and being a, a key player within the open source communities enable us to foster new relationship We've had a numbers of partners that we would we would probably not have heard of um, that are facing similar challenges that have reached out um, just on the assembly line project itself, for example, and, and have um, wanted to collaborate more closely and help build together something uh, something better. It also helped to democratize cybersecurity with a free ecosystem. So cybersecurity doesn't have to be expensive. So it's important that there are tools, uh, good tools that are available and uh, to, to everyone. It also helps us to take our people's expertise and uh, make, make the entire ecosystem better, work with the community. Uh, it enables to standardize exchange of threat intel and capabilities. So it enables to collaborate and exchange um, information that is critical for other people to that defend themselves so that they can integrate this uh, easily within their environment and, and make use of, of the information rapidly because cybersecurity happens really fast. And finally, it helps to remove boundaries to innovation. So really brings the entire community in, in the same direction and helps to make the, make the community stronger. So thank you very much for your time. If there's any questions, you can reach out back to the uh, or contact center at, at the address that's on the screen. And thanks for having me.